Um, yes, and finally, we're, I'm introducing a new thing I understand in the past. Um, during our services, the anthem that the choir sang used to be announced in the service. So we've decided to bring that back, but rather than announce it sort of during communion, um, I'm going to mention it in the notices, and I'm always going to put a little note in the bulletin so that you know what it is that the choir is singing, because I think that does enhance our enjoyment of, of the music that they're doing. And so um, Steve's very kindly written a little blurb for us about the music today, so let me read it to you because it's in quite a small print and in the inside cover. Um, so the introit that the choir is going to sing this morning is Locus Iste by Anton Bruckner, a 19th century Austrian composer. The words refer to the fact that this place was made by God and reflects the joy felt by the choir in being back creating musical worship in a setting we love. So the first piece they're going to be singing is Locus Iste. And then during communion, they're going to be singing the anthem, O Lord, increase our faith. Apparently the authorship may be disputed, is it by Lucemore or Gibbons, but the sentiment is undoubted. It is in the form of a prayer, asking God to strengthen us and confirm us in our true faith, a sentiment which is heartfelt, given our current troubled times. So that's a delight to have a choir back with us this morning. I would like to begin with the enjoy thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. heard some beautiful music describing the fact that this place was made by God and we feel God's presence and we open ourselves to that presence by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal. Give us light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marked your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So please stand as we say the glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases, and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love, new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our Lord. Says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gate shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that 
there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form likeness and create darkness. I make real and create woe. I, the Lord, do all of these things. The second reading is from the first letter to the Thessalonians, reading from the beginning. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for, in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example for all believers in Macedonia and in Asia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Asia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions who thought about us, what kind of welcome we had among you, and how we turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard the parables, they realised that Jesus was speaking about them. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered the emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God, things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him, and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now speak in the name of the Jesus who confounded the lawyers. Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, 
it's really rather a good formula because um, they delve into family history and discover um, things there that actually the celeb is going to have to come to terms with or was not expecting. And sometimes this one, the response is really, they're quite emotional. Um, you know, some celebs you know, end up in tears. Um, and usually um, they pick the information they found, which is of people who had a hard time. Um, Jenny Whitaker's uh, case, it was uh, a great great uncle who, was, um, who died in the First World War. Um, interestingly, the, her great great grandmother, um, who was named, had a middle name, Verdun, um, her mother, her grandmother remembered that a bit wrong, um, said that the great great uncle had been killed at Verdun. He didn't, he, he, he died later of wounds, but be that as it may, the story was there. And um, he added to Jodie Whittaker's life, to her sense of herself and who she was, hence the title, Who Do You Think You Are? I don't, you probably don't realise it, but actually you spend time telling stories about yourself, about your family. Might be football team, about your country, about whatever it may be, things that are important to you and that involve a sense of your identity. So <clears throat> if you want some homework, you know, when you go home and have your coffee or whatever you do when you get home, you know, come down after the time this time of day, um, but just, just <coughs> cast your mind back and, and think, you know, how, it, how do you tell stories? Now, they, they don't have to actually be um, a story at the beginning, middle and an end, but how often do you say things about yourself and your life which actually um, speaks of who you are. Um, you know, it, it, people talk about their school days, the older you get, the more you do it. Um, people talk about their achievements, about their sorrows, about their, you know, all the things that have happened to them. And sometimes those, those things aren't, aren't actually very easy to talk about. And I won't remember a guy called Frank in my biggest parish who had been a Japanese POW. And it was a full 50 years before he was able to actually speak openly about what had happened in there. He'd spent 50 years trying to process that as a part of his identity in a way in which he could cope. Um, other people sort of go under the radar. You know, sometimes it's because uh, they're too shy to speak about themselves. Sometimes others make so much noise that they can't be heard. But others, um, with a bit of help, can actually begin to tell the story. And a, a, an ex-colleague of mine um, left the ministry and went to run care homes. And one of the things he did was insist that every resident had their own personal scrapbook. And all the staff um, were obliged to read those scrapbooks, to look through those scrapbooks, so that they could understand who that person was. Not just the stereotype of the aged person who could no longer look after themselves, but actually, in the case of the little old lady, um, stereotypical old lady, who it turned out had been delivering military aeroplanes in World War II. And behind that stereotype, there lay the past of a person who had been courageous, outgoing, and capable. So it can be important to help people to tell stories and help people to be seen for who they are, as we have been, you know, we, we like to be seen for who we are. And of course, when it comes to end of life, um, at funerals, it's customary to have um, something is said about the life of the person, an account is given of who they were. Um, 
Um, and that's, I suppose in a way, it's, it's a sort of bringing that person back to life one more time before the vitality of cremation and burial. They become alive again there. So, right by this stage, um, be beginning to wonder, when, when's he going to get round to the God of Jesus bit? Well, here it is. <laughs> We've got a brilliant story this morning. Um, the best gotcha in the Gospels, I think. Um, and, wow, what of Jesus? He, he, was up, he was on it there, wasn't he? So I think you expect from Gordon. Um, <laughs> no, he's the other side of <laughs> And there are, there are lots of other stories there um, which paint the picture of Jesus. We don't get, um, in the Gospels, the, the biographical details. We, we actually, you know, don't know for sure anything very much about his siblings or, um, you know, other, other detailed bits of his life, but we've got the stories there which paint a picture, which bring him again to life. So if you want to bring Jesus to life, and if you want a resurrected Jesus, then keep telling the stories. Please would you stand as you are able as we come to declare our faith in the words of the Creed, remembering that as we say these words, we're joining in with Christians all around the world, but we're probably for the first time in, in our lifetimes experiencing similar hardships all around the world uh, with our fellow Christians. Um, so as we say these words, we remember that we're saying them together with many, many other voices. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit on near as we come to prayer. <laughs> and I'm going to be including in our prayers today um, virtually all of our year's minds for October because of the way that our worship has played out. Um, so I will be reading out some names that were from earlier in the month. Um, but I know that they're precious people to you, um, so there will be a list of names for the year's mind in our prayers. King of love. 
life. All things come from you and belong to you. Take our lives and consecrate them in your service. Keep your church focused on our hope in you and your hold on your creation. Lord, in your mercy, King of love, in your Christ's response to those seeking his entrapment, he reminded them not to put you to the test. Open our hearts to truth and justice. We pray for all who are making difficult decisions about managing the pandemic, both in this nation and around the world. We pray for the work on the vaccine against COVID-19. We pray for countries in political unrest, largely because of the pandemic and other economic woes. We pray for all who call political leaders to account. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of love, you provide for all that we need to sustain our life. Give us faith to place our money completely at your service. Teach us to be generous with all that we have, knowing that all that we have comes from you. Make us wise stewards of this currency of action. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. King of love, proclaim your release to all in the grip of debt and poverty. Give consolation to the anxious and desperate. We pray especially by name for Wyatt and Garrett Rufin, Martin Needham, Veronica Blackburn, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Fair, Sandra Miller, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Michelle Jenkins, Audrey Wilkinson, Richard Adams, Catherine Wilby, John Tuckford, and Ethel Hadfield. Restore our true fortunes, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. King of love. The fullness of your glory is hidden from our sight. Draw into the bright splendour of your presence all who have died. Pray for those who have recently died. Jackie Burns, Philip Creswick, Beatrice Atkinson, Dorothy Ledbetter, Gillian Proctor and Wee German. And remember those whose years more falls at this time. Brenda Norman, Derek Thorpe, Clara Davidson, Ruth Whitebrow, Rita Wedderall, and Anthony Downey. You call us by name, and we will rejoice with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. share with God those things that weigh heaven on our hearts, those things that we don't want to carry on our own anymore. And we place those things into God's hands, knowing that he loves and cares for us. Merciful God, 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Christ is So far the calling to find his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all that we share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, that I shall be healed. Lord, your eyes broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let your eyes shed for us, keep us in eternal life.
and bless it, God. You have fed us in the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we offer you, not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, we thank you for treating us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. So as Adrian was saying earlier, try and tell some stories of Jesus this week. Go in peace to love.